physiology. All right, so the difference between anatomy and physiology. Human anatomy literally refers to labeling parts of the body. Okay, so this is this bone, this is this nerve, this is this muscle. It's literally just identifying, okay? Um, it might also ask you, you know, this bone connects with this bone via this joint, but it's really just all about identification, okay? The big thing with anatomy is memorization. It's not really much application in the sense of you have to think about, you know, oh, this, this potential injury could have affected this, and that. it's really just what is this. Most of the exam questions you'll get is a photo of a cadaver or a diagram, and it'll have an arrow pointed at something in the body, and you'll have to identify it to this part of the body. Physiology um, is a bit different. We're now talking about anatomy, yes, but we're also talking about the function of those parts of the bodies, okay? And how different parts of the body come together to form a major complex organism. Um, so it, it is a bit more tricky. Um, for example, physiology could be the nervous system's processes and the many different parts of the body it involves. So how the nervous system actually operates, um, how it goes, how um, nervous system cells go through the spinal cord and reach your fingertips and that kind of stuff. That's physiology. Whereas anatomy is literally just, this is this, this is this, this is this. Okay, so what it looks like when you're actually studying it in uni, this is, um, this is how it's kind of structured generally. Each week or each fortnight, you'll focus on a different system or a different part of the body. So this is what mine looked like when I did anatomy last year. I had week one on the skeletal system, then the muscular system, reproductive systems, cardiovascular systems, respiratory system, and then week six was our break week where we don't have uni or it's called flexi week because um, it's flexible and you can use it to study and stuff. Week seven was the digestive and urinary system. Week eight was the nervous system. Week nine was the special sensory organs first half. Week 10 was special sensory organs second half. So what week nine was, um, I believe week nine was where we did the eyes and then week 10 was the ears. Or well, maybe week nine was the ears and week 10 was the eyes. Nonetheless, we, that, that's what we mean by special sensory organ. It was the eyes and the ears. Um, so that's what mine looks like. Uh, every week was divided into a different system. Um, one of my friends who's doing bio or medical science at a different u uh, uni, hers was fortnight. So first two weeks was on skeletal system. Second set of two weeks was muscular system. That's just because my uni only does 10 weeks. Not a lot of unis do do 10 weeks. That's because I have trimesters at UNSW. Um, so, yeah, it, but generally it's structured by systems is what I'm trying to say. All right. So um, you have a few lectures per week. Sometimes they're pre-recorded. Mine were live. Usually almost 99.9% .9 of the time, if you have a live lecture, it'll still be recorded and it's not compulsory to attend. Do I recommend attending? Yes, because you can ask questions and um, you're more on top of it if you attend the lectures. However, I was not always attending these lectures. I was definitely someone who watched it back um, and I had designated times I would watch the lectures throughout the week to help me stay on top of it. Okay, so um, I would suggest, and this is what I did, attend your lectures live for the first few weeks of term one. If you find that when you don't attend your lectures, you let them pile up and you, you're not going back to them, force yourself to keep attending. If you're someone that knows, okay, Thursday mornings, for example, from nine to 12, I'm gonna go through all my lectures for anatomy. You can watch the recordings, okay? But just watch out and ask to see if they are recorded because the last thing you want to do is say, oh yeah, I watched the recording and then it's not recorded. Um, but generally they are. Um, I haven't had an in-person lecture at all um, at uni. Yeah, at all. We, I've never had an in-person lecture. Um, I know some people do, so that's another thing to kind of watch out for. But yeah, mine have all been online and recorded. Sometimes for some units, um, like my microbiology unit this term, that will be beginning, they have pre-recorded the le lectures and it's not live, it's just posted every week. Um, okay, yeah, so a few lectures per week where they'll run through the content for each body system. You will also have lab classes weekly. That's what I had, but I also know some people, especially if you're covering it 
a fortnight for example as i said some people spend week one and two on the skeletal system you will only have a lab per fortnight after you've covered the content but i did mine weekly obviously um where you'll focus on these systems and study them using real human specimens or cadavers Yes, this is something I'm not sure if everyone's aware of, but just know that it's coming, especially if you're someone that's um, a bit freakish with this kind of stuff. Um, you do, in your labs, you will likely have to encounter cadavers or um, deceased bodies that have been dissected and cut in particular ways so you can examine, for example, the bones or the muscles or the reproductive system. Um, yeah, if you have any concerns, definitely talk to your the people that are running your lab about it. Um, it's generally okay, but yeah, I know some people do have issues with that. I found it very, very interesting, and it definitely helped me consolidate my knowledge. Um, there is nothing like picking up a bone, which sounds very weird to say, but there's nothing like picking up a bone and saying, oh yeah, this is this, this is this, this is this. So much better than just looking at a diagram. Um, my labs weren't compulsory sometimes they are for some people but I know generally labs aren't compulsory however I would say to go to them definitely definitely go to them because yeah it it took my knowledge from here to here it definitely helped me um yeah during these labs you'll walk around and look at physical and look at and physically examine the specimens Often you have student teachers or tutors as well as your lecturer who runs you through what the different parts of the body are and their function. So you'll have small groups that will gather around the different tables with the different specimens and you'll have a leader, whether it be a student teacher or a lecturer or some other tutor, um, like a PhD student, for example, and they'll be running you through what each part of the body is um, based on your content. Okay, so you might have a lab manual. Um, some people do, most people have a lab manual. Um, and this is what it kind of looks like. It, it's basically, for example, if you're doing the muscular system, you would get this and then you'd walk around with a pen and write it down, write down each um, part of the body as you were examining it in your lab. Um, note the lab menu is like a collection of worksheets. Yeah, it is not accessible and your tutor will likely never see your copy. The lab manual is just for you. Um, yeah, but I would recommend filling it out um, because it definitely helps. Uh, but yeah, you, they don't collect your lab manual. It has nothing to do with them. Okay, so the assessment structure. Uh, this is the common structure for anatomy. You'll have a midterm and end of term spot test. So what a spot test is, is where you will get um, a diagram if it's online um, i had to go in person to mine but if it's online or on a computer you'll get a diagram and it'll point to something and it'll say what part of the body is this effectively and then you will have to um, like it'll give you likely multiple choices is, is what it is a lot of the time but when i say multiple choice it isn't like a it's this b it's this c it's this d it's this it's like multiple choice you open it and you get like 40 things that it could be and so you have to select one of them so there's a lot um, a lot of answers and it's not as easy as you would think um, or spot tests could be you go in person and they put down specimens on a table for example a bone and they ask you to label a certain part on your exam paper you label it and you submit it um, obviously, if it's a midterm, it's halfway through the term, so it'll be on weeks one to five. And then if it's the end of term, it'll be on weeks six to ten. Um, that's obviously if you have ten weeks. I know most unis don't have ten weeks, but obviously midterm is the first half, end of term is the final half. So those are spot tests. Um, you have a continue or continuous examinations all throughout the term, which is a weekly quiz which is usually like 10-ish questions around about that, which is still multiple choice, um, but it's only on the week you've just covered. Okay, so the muscular system, you have 10 multiple choice questions on it. Then you'll have a final examination where, again, it's mostly multiple choice. However, I know that um, my final examination also had some short answer questions, okay? Especially for that physiology part where it starts to ask you about the function of the body parts and how they um, contribute with other parts of the body to create certain processes and effects on the body. Um, 
Yeah, so your spot tests and quizzes are usually all multiple choice with a drop down selection with approximately 20 or more possible answers. Your final examination is typically mostly multiple choice and some short answer questions. And obviously that's after the term. So you have your, your weeks in your term and then you have a designated period that's an exam period. And obviously your final examination is during your exam period. All right, so 